One of my favorite things about Lightroom is the ability to add photos to collections. So what are collections? Well, they're kind of like the folder structure on your hard drive, right? It's a way to organize your photos. But with collections, they only appear in Lightroom and you can add one photo to multiple collections. And this is very useful. Uh, for example, if I've got one photo on my hard drive in an 03 March folder, I might also want that photo to be in a folder called Best Landscape Photos and another folder called Photos to Print. And in this case, in order to do that, I'd have to duplicate the photo more than once, which means that that picture would now take up three times as much space on my hard drive. And on top of that, if I want to edit the photo even more, I'd have to edit all three copies. Any edits that I make to one of the copies would not appear in the other ones. Luckily, Lightroom fixes this problem. So if you've got one of your photos on your hard drive at that location, it'll show up in the left-hand sidebar in Lightroom's library module. But at the same time, you can add it to a Best Landscape Photos collection and a Photos to Print collection. And the beauty of this system is that you're not creating duplicate copies of your photo every time you add it to a new collection. You could have one picture that's in a hundred different collections and it won't take up any more space on your hard drive. And on top of that, you can also edit that picture regardless of which collection you're in and those edits are gonna show up in every other collection as well. Very, very useful way to organize your photos. But let me show you now how I actually recommend setting up your collections and collection sets so that every one of your photos is as easy as possible to find. As you can see, right now the only collections I've got are the ones that I created in the previous video, plus the automatic smart collection set that always appears. But if you use this as your main way of organizing pictures, which you probably should, they can get out of hand very quickly if you're not careful. So you have to be smart about it. The method that I recommend is to create three big overarching collection sets. Call them favorites, from, and intended for. And again, make sure that these are collection sets rather than just regular collections. Now, under the favorites collection set, create three new collections, good, better, and best. This is where you're gonna put all of your best photos no matter where you took them or anything else. And that's all that that one takes. The next collection set down is called from, and this is where you're gonna organize all of your pictures from specific photo shoots or places you traveled or wherever. Uh, for now, I'm gonna set up just a few collection sets within this one, trips, gigs, macro, drone, and I'm gonna stop there, but you can see just how open-ended this can get. And I'm not actually adding any photos yet, and in fact, I can't right now because these are just collection sets. Lightroom doesn't let you add photos to collection sets, only to collections. Let's jump down to the collection set called Intended For. This is where you're gonna group all of your photos for projects that you're working on, or any photos that you want to output for printing, publishing, or something like that. And of course, the collections that you create depend on the types of things that you're working on. I obviously use some photos for this YouTube channel, so I'm gonna create a collection set called Videos. I also write articles for Photography Life, so I'll create one called Articles, and then maybe I'm working on a calendar right now, so I'll create a collection, this one's not a collection set, it's just a regular collection called Calendar, where I can add those photos. And then maybe another collection called Instagram. You can really have as many as you want, anything that falls under this bubble that's intended for someplace else. And hopefully now you're starting to see a decent organization structure taking shape. These three collection sets, favorites, from, and intended for, cover pretty much everything. And you can divide them even further. In fact, right now I'm gonna drag this Photography Life Workshops collection set that I created in the last video into trips. And I'll also drag those two macro collections into my macro collection set. And now, even if I have 100,000 photos in my Lightroom catalog, how would I ever lose track of these pictures? I don't have to remember the date that I took them. I don't have to scroll through a bunch of folders. I just know that I took these on a trip and these are macro photos and that makes them immediately easy to find. Now for smart collections, these are automatic collections that Lightroom creates and it pulls in any photo that has these characteristics. For example, any photo that has a five-star rating. Now most of the time, personally, I don't pay attention to the smart collections because the structure that I just showed you already makes your photos super easy to find. But a couple of the smart collections can still be useful, and one of those is this recently modified smart collection. It only includes photos that you've edited in the past two days, and at the moment there's none because I've not done any edits so far for this video series, but of course that's gonna change before long. And if you want to modify the default to something other than the past two days, you can do that too. Uh, just right click on the recently modified collection, go to edit smart collection and you change the number of days right here. 
You can also create new smart collections along these same lines if you want. Uh, let me cancel out of that. If you go over to this icon and click Create New Smart Collection, it pops up the same dialog that you just saw, and you've got a lot of categories to choose from. You can even layer these. So for example, you can make your smart collection only include photos with a four-star rating that you have not post-processed yet. So I'd say just play around with that some. Most of the time you probably won't be organizing your photos with smart collections, but for some stuff, like the recently modified photos, this is still a very useful tool. Now, if you right-click on any collection, a few more options are gonna pop up. The first three are just creating new ones like we've already done, but the one below that is set as target collection. If you click this, a little plus icon pops up next to the name of the collection, and now every time that you highlight a photo and press the letter B on your keyboard, it'll get added to that collection. Now, I don't need to do that right here, so I'm gonna right-click again and uncheck. The next two options, rename and duplicate collection, Hopefully those are self-explanatory. Below that is the color label option. If you label one of your collections with a color, it doesn't do anything to your photos themselves, but it does add a little stripe here that you might find kind of helpful, especially if it's a collection that you use all the time. But I'm going to click none for now. The next one's down let you delete the collection, which does not delete the photos on your hard drive. It simply removes the collection that organizes those pictures in Lightroom. And then export collection as a catalog. Uh, if you've ever wanted to share a small Lightroom catalog with those photos, this is where you do that. You probably won't be doing it very often. And the last one is import smart collection settings. Really unusual that you'd want to do that unless you have uh, an insanely complicated smart collection stored in another Lightroom catalog and you want to add it to this one. Just doesn't apply to most photographers. And there we go. I can now add my photos to the collections I've just created. Uh, right now there's not very many, but it's pretty useful to do anyway. And of course, good organization in Lightroom is an ongoing process. You've got to start off with a smart system like the one I just showed, and then keep up with it through the future. That's how you avoid a big mess of photos that just gets completely out of hand. Well, I hope you found that to be useful. If you have any questions at all though, please leave them in the comments section below. With Photography Life, I'm Spencer Cox, and I'll see you next time.